also a guide, and he still operates his business from the same houseboat that his grandfather used on Lake Nagin. Srinagar is a city of nearly two million people that sits on the shores of a chain of lakes. In the 1970s and 80s, this area was a haven for thousands of tourists. But today, because of the latest territorial conflict over Kashmir between Pakistan and India, there's hardly a tourist in sight and even fewer fly fishermen. After 36 hours of chaotic travel, the comfort of a shakriya on Dal Lake seems the perfect way for Travis and John to take in their new surroundings and slowly adjust to life in Kashmir. By morning, the peace and tranquility of Dahl Lake is a distant memory. After a year of planning, Don in India reminds the boys that they are here to fish. Trout and fly fishing aren't native to India. When the British were colonizing this part of the world, they brought their sports and fish and affection for tea with them. They also brought their peculiar way of taking something fairly simple, like fly fishing, and overthinking it. This meant that rivers in India inherited the beat system, where certain sections of a river are designated for two anglers at a time and reserved, like a table at a fine restaurant. The rivers are yours for the day, but only after you've had your tea and bread and you've undergone a detailed inspection of your flies and equipment by the river warden. Judging from the crowds, fly fishing is apparently a rare sight around here. Here's John and Travis to tell the story in their own words. I think we're a pretty unique uh, experience for a lot of these local people. I don't think they've seen this happen too much before. The first river we fished uh, at Varanag, I believe it was called, uh, you know, it was actually a slow river that was fairly clear. There were people lining the banks while we were fishing, which if, you know, Generally, trout don't appreciate that. Maybe the trout here are just like the people. The personal space that they need is probably not as large as, say, an American trout. Travis had a great comment and said that it felt like, you know, Tiger Woods coming up to the 18th on the Masters. And another fact that was outstanding was that there were net caddies here. These were the guys that did all the netting. They weren't exactly guides because they weren't imparting any instruction really they were just there to to feel official with the net well the the first fish that we landed uh, when we turned around to release it that there was an uproar i mean clearly these people hadn't seen this type of activity going on before you've got you know all this gear you've traveled all the way to go over here you're going to fish of course the ultimate goal is to keep the fish and when they released that fish the first time. These people were shocked. I think they were more blown away by that than the fact that two Americans in funny looking outfits were actually in the water fly fishing. And then we proceeded to move down, you know, below the, the ladies washing their clothes and really realized that the town beat was also the town kind of water source and sore and laundry and bathroom all rolled into one. You know, the real thing that was just wild was that this is such an important, you know, part of the town that, that everybody uses it. And to actually realize that it doubled as a fishing beat was, at least in my mind and in my experience, kind of bizarre. On the way out of town, Maksud thought it was time for a, a cultural exchange and got us in on a cricket match. Travis stepped up like he was Babe Ruth, connected a couple times, and really was a hit with the ladies. Uh, Maksud and I, uh, not so well. You know, we, uh, we pretty much 
got sat down fairly quickly. And after a couple a couple shots, we thought it was time to head out of town before uh, any of these elders thought we were disgracing the cricket field and decided to give us the boot. Mountains in Kashmir are so beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous, so rugged and steep. It's really amazing in a country of 1.7 billion people that they have that many natural resources left as far as woodlands and beautiful rivers. Um, the, the rivers are gorgeous. They're extremely fast flowing, most of them, because the grade coming out of the Himalayas is so fast and a lot of them are, are glacial. It's amazing that that it's all the same. The fly fishing is the same no matter where you go in the world. It's same types of insects, same trout if there are trout in there, um, and you can catch them the same way. And it's pretty awesome to, to be able to go anywhere and feel that way on the water. When you're on the water, you could be in any trout stream in the Rockies, but the minute you got out of the river and started moving around the banks. It was everywhere there were signs that you were not at home anymore. The beat system was interesting because I've never fished anywhere where you actually had to write your name down, the beat you're on, how many fish you caught, and you were only allowed to keep six fish, I believe, per beat, and so since John and I were releasing all of our fish, we'd come back and say, we caught 25. And they'd say, no, 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 you're only allowed to catch six. And so, <laughs> so our scorecards were a little off, but it was pretty cool. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that keeps the rivers as pristine as they are right now and preserves them for the future so my kids can go there someday. The Arbol was by far, at least in what we experienced, the best fishing, something that you'd really want to travel halfway around the world to do. The fish there were incredibly powerful. And you can tell they're just all very fat fish. And this was one of the few rivers when you looked around and started turning over rocks, you saw good aquatic insects. And there were hatches there. We saw some stoneflies flying around. There was some sort of drake that was hatching. Here, the fish were much larger and much healthier than anything we had seen throughout the area. So there were lots of smiles and, and congratulations as we did our final paperwork for the day. This was really great being with Travis for this time because I've known Travis for a long time and to have the opportunity to travel to a place like this was really special. Uh, we work together, we see each other a lot, but you know we're both pretty busy and to be on a trip 
like this with him was great because it was fun to watch him fish, it was fun to listen to him laugh, it was fun to see him integrate with the local community, and I think uh, he was probably the favorite of most of the guys here. It's not too difficult to make friends in Kashmir. Everywhere we went, people were inviting us in, whether it was into their tent for some rice and some smoke, or whether it was up along the trail, they were going out of their way to get involved with what was going on, and seemingly had a lot of fun doing it. The night by the campfire was fantastic. We had a great time. Uh, Ravi shared with me his gypsy dancing. I got into a breakdance fight with him. Everybody thought that was pretty humorous. Uh, not fueled by any means by the copious amounts of marijuana that were growing rampant in that area, but rather the excitement of hanging out with these guys and meeting all of these new people who were so incredibly friendly and generous about the landscapes that we saw, the rivers that we were fishing, uh, the great adventure that Maksud took us on. And Maksud gave us a look at Kashmir that was something I don't think too many people would get the opportunity to see. We went all over the country, from the cities to the villages, into the mountains. I guess ultimately, we need to thank Maksud's grandfather for being the man who introduced Maksud to fishing and planted those seeds and got him going along a path that would ultimately 